that day ahead. President Joe Biden is hosting German Chancellor Angela Merkel today. This will likely be her final appearance at the White House before she steps down from her long-held position this fall. They'll attempt to iron out an ongoing dispute between the U.S. and Germany over the Russian Nord Stream 2 pipeline. They'll also talk about climate change and COVID vaccines as well. Also, meanwhile, the Arizona Senate is holding a hearing on the progress of the 2020 election audit in Maricopa County. Let's find out more from Newsmax White House correspondent Emerald Robinson. Emerald, what's the latest on this ongoing audit? Hi, Joe. Well, that hearing is set to begin in about an hour, 10 a.m. Pacific time. This is a hearing according to the Arizona Senate in order to discuss preliminary findings in the audit. Remember, they said that a report will be coming out at the end of July or early August. But this hearing also comes after the Senate president there, Karen Fan, told an Arizona radio station this week that there are discrepancies between the tallies in the Arizona audit and what Maricopa County recorded as the official results from the 2020 election. Now, the White House this week before President Biden's appearance and remarks in Philadelphia on the election in 2020 and uh, the election integrity bills across the country called this Arizona audit a sham. And now in the last 24 hours, uh, House Democrats on the Oversight Committee have announced a probe into the uh, independent contractor that was contracted by this Arizona Senate to conduct an audit. They're called Cyber Ninjas. They're a cybersecurity firm. The House Dem uh, Oversight uh, Committee Democrats now saying that they are opening an investigation into Cyber Ninjas. They sent a letter to the CEO requesting information. They're accusing the company of bias, of uh, uh, of compromising the integrity of the ballots and uh, voting equipment and of uh, uh, jeopardizing election integrity. Now, that, I think that will probably come up during this hearing we're about to see now. But it's interesting that the Arizona Senate called this hearing today, especially after what we're seeing down in Georgia uh, from a court case down there where there was a court order to release documents to certain groups for inspection in Fulton County, Georgia. Now, remember, the Secretary of State in Georgia has defended Georgia's handling of the election and the certification of the results, and he even defended Fulton County. But now he's singing a bit of a different tune. In a tweet, uh, he posted a Twitter not not too long ago, Brad Raffensperger saying Fulton County's continued fel failures have gone on long enough with no accountability. Rick Barron and Ralph Jones, Fulton's registration chief, must be fired and removed from Fulton's elections leadership immediately. Fulton's voters and the people of Georgia deserve better. So uh, Raffensperger now weighing in in kind of a different way, and that's, that's not gone unnoticed by many Georgians, saying they don't have a short-term memory, Absolutely. Joe. Absolutely. I think from Georgia to Pennsylvania to Arizona, uh, the voters will be remembering what occurred in 2020 for quite some time. Thank you, Emerald, as always. We'll check in with you in a little bit. Scenes uh, showing up on the Internet, they're just horrifying. So, Leo, as always, we appreciate you. We'll talk to you again soon. Joining us now is Florida Congressman Byron Donalds. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Want to get your reaction to the Cuban government's response, because clearly uh, we know this is about 62 years of oppression uh, that the Cuban people have finally said enough. My response to the Cuban government is time for them to stand down and let the Cuban people be free. Communist dictatorships have failed the people of Cuba. And I know that no, no, now that you have the new president after the Castro brothers have finally let let go of their grip of power, one, you know, but them no longer being with us, it's time for the Cuban people to be free. It's that simple. You're going to see more of this in the streets of Havana, in Cuba, because people have had enough. Uh, we are the human condition desires freedom above all else period, point blank. And the Cuban people deserve it. The Cuban government needs to actually be an open society. It needs to be a, 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 a democracy, a free society, so people can thrive and flourish on their own, as opposed to the Cuban government handing out everything, which means it hands out little to nothing for the people to be able to free and for them to flourish on the island that they call home.
Absolutely. Now, we've seen voices on the far left, including groups like Black Lives Matter, try to lay the blame uh, for the violence that is occurring now in Cuba at the feet of the United States. In fact, in a statement first given to Politico, the group said, the people of Cuba are being punished by the U.S. government because the country has maintained its commitment to sovereignty and self-determination. The United States leaders have tried to crush this revolution for decades. Uh, I don't know where to even begin with that statement because it's quite clear to anyone paying attention the government is not the people the people are the people and the people have been deprived of self-determination for six decades but of course as all things it's not the six decades of oppression that the left is upset about they're upset about somehow trying to lay the burden at the feet of the orange man who was in office for four years Let's be very clear. Number one, uh, the people that run Black Lives Matter are Marxist communists themselves. Uh, before they scrubbed their website, a lot of Marxist propaganda and Marxist theology was on that website in their own mission statement. So once you understand that, you understand why, from a political standpoint, from an ideological standpoint, they are hand in glove with the Cuban regime. It's the same ideology. The only difference is that in Cuba, you are seeing the full, manifesta the full manifestation of Marxist communism. That's number one. Number two, the United States has always been and continues to be the ally, the chief promoter of liberty and freedom across the globe. We are the country, frankly, you see with us leaving Afghanistan after 20 years, we are the country that didn't go in there and colonize the place and create our own government. We were there in support for the Afghani people to try to create a government for themselves. We've done the same thing in Iraq. We did it, frankly, in Western Europe after World War II. That's the history of our country. So for Black Lives Matter to come out and say something so egregious, to me, is just foolish, it's idiotic, and it demonstrates their political ideology, which is an ideology of Marxism, of totalitarianism. And one quick contrast on that. I find it interesting that Black Lives Matter wants to be in the streets protesting our police officers last summer. But when people are being shot in the streets in Cuba by their military, people are breaking into the homes of Cuban people, the military, and dragging them out of their homes, BLM is silent. That's deafening to me. It's, I mean, it's really, truly, you have the Biden administration effectively telling the people of Cuba to keep calm. Um, that is their response when we watch all of America city to city burn in the aftermath of George Floyd uh, in the grips of COVID-19. But I want to move ahead uh, to another egregious departure from responsibility. The Texas Democrats walked out, got on buses to a private airfield with beer and all types of shenanigans, flew to Washington, D.C. to get the protection of that elite left. Uh, they're getting all the praise in the world. In fact, listen to Vice President Kamala Harris talk about their actions. I talked about I mean, it, it's truly staggering to me. I mean, first of all, this is a Democratic Party that has sat on their hands while the Justice Act by Tip Senator Tim Scott has sat there collecting dust, as if they don't recognize that we got a Civil Rights Act of 64 before we got a Voting Rights Act of 65. Incremental is not a dirty word. Your reaction? I, I just can't even believe what the vice president has said. It's utterly ridiculous. It makes no sense at all. The great sacrifice and courage, they hopped on a private plane and had beer and flew to Washington, D.C., of all places. They should be ashamed of themselves. As somebody who served in a state legislature, your job is to go represent your people in the state body and vote, not to cut and run because you're not getting your way. Listen, folks, elections have consequences. In Texas, Republicans run the state, and this is what they're doing. But to get on the plane and run to D.C., that's not courage, that's cowardice. And here's the second part about all of this. What they're saying makes no sense. Black people in the state of Texas before the Texas bill and after the Texas bill have more access to the ballot than black people in the state of Delaware, the home state of the president of the United States, frankly, in the state of New York, which is a blue state. And so for them to go and so go to D.C. and complain that the, that the Republicans are putting in voter security measures that are going to secure the vote for all Texans is ridiculous. It's outrageous. The vice president should be ashamed of herself. She's telling them, you see what she's what she should say is, do you see what's going on in Cuba where people have real courage? Get back on the private plane, go back to Texas and do your job.
Absolutely, Congressman. Quickly, before I lose you, uh, to that particular point, you talk about the fact that we have uh, individuals who say that these voting integrity laws, oh, that they're a, a solution in search of a problem that doesn't exist. You know, talk to me a little bit. You just touched on it. We've seen the most robust increase in voting turnout amongst the groups Democrats claim are adversely impacted by these voting laws in states that already had voter ID laws. So where is this, this, all the people in need of the saving um, that they're in such outrage about? Let's be very clear about what's happening. The reason why the Democrat Party and these outside groups are upset about these new voter laws that are coming through states uh, is because what they do is actually take away the ability of these third party front groups that do operate in elections from being able to operate. That's what's happening. That's what states like my state of Florida are cracking down on. We're saying, listen, if you're a citizen, you want to get an absentee ballot, Great, request one, we'll send it to you. And when you go to the polls, you have to demonstrate who you are with your ID, which everybody has, and then you go cast your ballot, no problem at all. But what we're not gonna allow is these third party front groups being with, with outside money, dark money, the way the Democrats love talking about it, to come into these areas and basically electioneer. That we're getting rid of. And they're upset about that because they view the, they think the only way they can win is with these outside groups electioneering. And the reason why they need outside groups to electioneer is because we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. Their agenda sucks. It's six months in and look what's happening to the country. So when your agenda is bad and people know it, you have to electioneer, you have to gaslight, you have to use dog whistles to try to foment unrest for people to want to support you. That's why the behavior is the way it is from the Democrat Party today. Absolutely. Congressman Donalds, we appreciate you. Thank God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon. Anytime. Thanks for having All me. All right. I'm Joe Pinion. Well, wokeness in the military is in full effect under President Biden. A new report says it's focusing on diversity and division, courtesy of critical race theory. The authors of the report interviewed 77 current and retired naval officers about the problems they didn't feel comfortable running through the traditional chain of command. I want to welcome the host of Stinchfield here on Newsmax TV, Grant Stinchfield himself. Grant, you know, tell us more about this and your series on the woke military, because I think most Americans can agree it's more important to be prepared for war than to be dealing with the silliness we're actually having in this domestic struggle. Yeah, you know, Joe, it's amazing to look at what's going on in the United States military right now. We're, we're training these soldiers, airmen, Navy people, to be social justice warriors, not combat ready warriors. And, and that's a huge problem. And it's not just critical race theory either. You're talking about gender equality issues. Uh, you're talking about lowering physical standards and the test, which didn't work out very well by the Army because they tried to make it a gender-neutral test, meaning men and women would take the same test and women were still failing. So now they're trying to come up with another way to be more, quote, equitable through all of this. Um, every member of the military I've spoken with doesn't care whether it's a no. woman next to them, whether it's a black person, white person, Hispanic person next to them, Joe, they only care whether they're prepared, whether they can fire their weapon, uh, downrange, and uh, help save each other's lives. That's it, and win wars. It doesn't care about what color you are, what race you are, or, or what sex you are. Absolutely. I mean, many of the people included in that report were actually member, people of color, uh, including a black uh, armed service member who said, quote, they actually only thought, felt they only valued her because she was a black woman. Um, as he said, when a missile tears apart a ship, uh, it doesn't care about anyone's color or creed. Uh, Grant, thank you so much. We'll be seeing you tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time with he's also the host of the Lightning Rod podcast. Also with us is Raymond Lopez, the alderman from Chicago Ward 15. Rod, Raymond, thank you for joining us. Uh, these shootings are out of control. Chicago typically um, sees a rise in violence, as many places do, uh, over the summer. Um, in the seven days, though, from July 11th, uh, police reported 25 homicides 
and 102 shooting incidents. I mean, Rod, I'll talk to you. We know that violence is out of control uh, from Oakland to New York City. Uh, we've seen Portland uh, homicides, abuse. It's through the roof. But specifically here in Chicago, it appears to be the epicenter for a level of abnormality in society that we have never seen before. Well, and yesterday's mass shootings was the fifth time this year, the fifth time this year where there have been two mass shootings in a single day. The average in Chicago so far this year is more than 10 people are going to get shot. Now, this violence is the result of gangbangers shooting up the city. Gangbangers outnumber police officers 10 to 1. Uh, police officers, because of Mayor Lightfoot, Governor Pritzker, defund the police movement and, and those efforts in Chicago and in other places, are leaving the police department in record numbers. 363 police officers have retired this year because they know the political leadership by Mayor Lightfoot and others that don't have their backs. And as a result, the mayor's proposal is to not hire more police officers. What she wants to do is hire more mental health experts. My recommendation is what they ought to do, those mental health professionals, the first people they ought to visit when they begin their work is to go visit the mayor and her advisors because that's a policy that's madness and it's maddening. The violence is happening right now. It's not happening tomorrow. It's, it'll happen tomorrow. But the problem is now. And what are you going to do now, Mayor, to protect lives, largely black lives and Latino lives, where the gangbangers control certain neighborhoods? And she's falling way short because she's afraid to do those hard and necessary things like backing up the police, hiring more police officers, and giving them the ability and the freedom to go do their jobs. Absolutely. And Raymond, I'll come to you. Uh, because while we're so obsessed with race, let's be very clear, the victims in the city of Chicago are black and brown people. The perpetrators often in these horrific intercommunity crimes are black and brown people. We've seen uh, the year through Sunday, 11 percent jump uh, compared to uh, in shootings compared to the same time frame in 2020. I mean, at some point, we just have to realize that this is not a partisan issue. There are people whose lives are being destroyed and the individuals entrusted to safeguard their lives and make those lives matter are more interested in politicking uh, than actually creating substance that leads to the actual substance of change. Without a doubt, Joe, we've seen politics over public safety for the better part of the year and indeed almost the entirety of Mayor Lightfoot's first term in office. You know, Governor Blagojevich is right. Gangs are at the heart of the point because all this work of defund the police, reimagine policing, uh, the Chicago, Con Chicago Times uh, reporting the mental health clinicians will start answering some 911 calls in Chicago instead of the police. They say the alternative response, as they're calling it, programs are being launched amid continuing debate over the role of police after the killing of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer last spring. Uh, Governor, I'll come to you because, yes, we all know for a record we do have a mental health crisis in this country. But perhaps the best way to deal with mental health is to, number one, actually assess if that's actually the case. Because nine of the ten times when people are calling uh, 911 and there's a real emergency, uh, they don't need a mental health expert. They need the police. Well, they need the police, and many of those calls happen in the domestic violence circumstances where the woman is facing immediate, the immediate threat of harm, and sending a social worker to that sort of an environment is ridiculous. It's madness. And here again, I think the mayor and her people ought to be evaluated for their mental stability. You know, every time the mayor gets criticized constructively by people like Alderman Lopez and others who come from communities that are being plagued by gun violence, her reaction is to start pointing fingers and calling the playing the race card and the gender card and all the rest. The fact of the matter is that nearly 80 percent of the people that are being shot up in Chicago are black lives. And if the Democrats and mayors like Mayor Lightfoot really care about black lives, they would get behind the police, hire more police, because the ranks of the police are dwindling, because the morale is so low, because politicians like this mayor, our governor, and other Democrats are playing politics and putting that over the policy of public safety. The gangbangers know it, so they're running crazy in their neighborhoods because they control those streets and they know the police officers right. are basically uh, handcuffed and unable to do their jobs.
Raymond, quickly got about 30 seconds here. I want to give you a chance to respond because I know often uh, those victims, those faceless victims, uh, you know them personally, you know their stories. Uh, what is it that people just don't know about the pain and suffering ravaging uh, this community of individuals in desperate need of help? You know, we see a lot coming from left individuals, woke individuals, everyone who's concerned about the fate of the quote unquote black and brown community who've never stepped foot in one of those neighborhoods. They just use it for political purposes. But behind those catchphrases are families, our children, our grandparents who are being torn apart either when their family members are struck by bullets or when they're attending funerals. They don't want less police. They want better police. They want better interactions. And we can do better, but we have to stop playing games. We have to call out the cancer that's in our midst, gangs, and we need to aggressively go after them with no compassion. They have zero compassion themselves for the innocent lives that they are hurting in our communities. We must return the favor in order to protect our residents and our cities. Absolutely. Governor Alderman Rod Raymond, we appreciate you. God bless. We'll talk to you again soon. Jeff, a few stories to take you behind the headlines, plus some others you may have missed. The Biden administration says it's prepared to begin evacuation flights for Afghan interpreters and translators who aided the U.S. military effort in the nearly 20-year war. Now, their destinations are still unknown, and there are lingering questions about how to ensure their safety until they can get on planes. Meanwhile, internal watchdogs at the Justice Department are blasting the FBI for botching the investigation into disgraced USA girls gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser. The inspector general is saying the bureau failed to address allegations of sexual abuse by Nasser with the, quote, utmost seriousness and urgency that the case deserved and required. The report says that Nasser continued working with athletes for more than a year, abusing more than 70 athletes while the investigation went nowhere. I'm here on the East Coast, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. I'm Joe Pinion filling in for John Bachman. Well, President Joe Biden hosts German Chancellor Angela Merkel today. It's expected to be the chancellor's last visit to the White House before she steps down this fall. The two will try to iron out an ongoing dispute between the U.S. and Germany over the Russian Nord Stream 2 pipeline. They'll also talk about climate change and the COVID vaccine issues. Meanwhile, in Cuba, that his communist government was at least partially to blame for the protests and a small concession to the protesters, Cuba announced it would lift restrictions on food and medicine that travelers could bring into the country. Uh, here's what Florida Congressman Byron Donalds told us last hour in response to these Cuban government crackdowns. Take a listen. The human condition desires freedom above all else, period, point blank. And the Cuban people deserve it. The Cuban government needs to actually be an open society. It needs to be a, 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 a democracy, a free society, so people can thrive and flourish on their own, as opposed to the Cuban government handing out everything, which means it hands out little to nothing for the people to be able to free and for them to flourish on the island that they call home. All right, shifting gears here. Senate Democrats are pressing forward with their spending reconciliation plan, running it by President Biden. Let's find out more from Newsmax national correspondent Logan Raddick, who joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Logan, what are you hearing? Well, Joe, President Biden, who was a senator for 36 years, was back at his old stopping grounds yesterday for lunch with current Senate Democrats, and he was briefed on their infrastructure plan, which is worth $4.1 trillion total. Only $600 billion goes towards traditional infrastructure like roads and bridges, with the remaining $3.5 trillion going towards initiatives like climate change. Great to be home, great to be back with all my colleagues, and I think we're going to get a lot done. Senate Democrats briefed Biden on their plan over lunch on Capitol Hill. The closed-door meeting was the start of the president's effort to firm up support for upcoming legislation, from infrastructure to voting rights. Biden needs all the votes he can get with slim congressional majorities, and he'll have a hard time swaying any of the 50 Republican senators. We are borrowing and borrowing and borrowing so that we can spend, 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 and it is at this point not things that we need to be spending on. Ernst is alluding to the wish of progressives granted in the budget resolution, funding for climate initiatives, electric vehicles, clean and renewable power, resilient projects, housing, and more. 
that will not only help our country adapt to a change in climate, but slow climate change itself. But Senator Joe Manchin is expressing concerns about climate plans that could hurt his state of West Virginia economically, even though he supports Medicare expansion. Senate Budget Committee Chair Bernie Sanders, who played a key role in negotiating these climate initiatives, supports the package, and he's pushing back against GOP concerns of inflation. Well, I am concerned about inflation, among many other things. This bill, uh, this three and a half trillion, and then there's another 600 billion in a so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill, will pay for itself. It'll be paid for in a variety of ways, but significantly by higher taxes uh, on the wealthy and large corporations. So that should not add uh, to the inflation concerns. And while this is all taking place, there's a separate track that's still being pursued as a bipartisan bill will be introduced Wednesday and the Senate will vote on whether or not to advance that to discuss it further. Uh, so you need 60 votes for that. And then the reconciliation bill would need just a simple majority. The Democrats, all 50 of them, to support it to pass. But as you can see, Joe Manchin, while he's a fan of Medicare expansion, does not want to see all these Green New Deal type initiatives. Joe, back to you. Thanks, Logan. We'll continue to monitor that. Joining us now is Republican Congressman uh, Doug LaMalfa. He serves in California's first district, one of the largest in the state. Uh, Democrats say they plan to propose after funding most of this proposal with new taxes on wealthy Americans and corporations. Uh, we know for a fact that you were talking about another multi-trillion dollar boondoggle, all the taxes in the world on the wealthy and the corporations couldn't pay for it. What is your reaction to the plan and also the proposal to try to attempt to fund it? 